By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we open up old school magic. This is another mail day video and today I've got very exciting package. I don't know what's in here. It's sent to me by Plague Doctor, a good friend of the channel, also a patron. And uh, he's just a lover of magic. Um, he's been on the show a few times with decks. I'll actually put an info card here to one of the matches I've played against. It was just great fun. Uh, he had a really cool Taggle Maggot deck. And uh, yeah, he sent me a package. So let's open it up, find out what's in here. Oh, I see an iPhone box. Let's see. iPhone box of magic cards. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Let me just close the window because it's... Sorry for the noise. Just a lot of noise coming from the outside. Um, okay, so these are the magic cards, I guess. Uh, or, you know, we'll see what's in here. Let's try to open it up. Very cool Plague Doctor that you, you know, just send me stuff out of the love for the game. And uh, we sometimes sometimes trade uh, some cards as well, which is just, just great fun. Um, let's open it up. Oh, here we go. Look at that. Ah, yes, we traded for some Arabian Nights cards, I think. Ah, there's a little note here as well. So maybe start with reading the note. Let's see, let's take this out. Timmy, an ongoing project of mine is to build 20 revised starter decks. As Watsy opened. Oh, whoa, 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 that's cool. That is cool stuff. As Watsy opened in 94. I had enough cards to build an extra one and based on the rares, I instantly thought of you. This is the exact order in which the cards were packed. Back in the day, my playgroup and I never used sleeves as we're trying to get real patting on them through play. I hope you enjoy this and have a peaceful rest of the summer. Your friend, Plague Doctor. I'm gonna have a very peaceful summer actually. I'm gonna go on holiday in two days. So I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, but wow, look at this box, the box alone. I'm just taking it in, I'm just taking a moment. Just the box alone is stunning. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, you know what? In a moment, I'm gonna look at the contents. I'm first gonna have a look at these cards uh, because I'm actually collecting the Arabian Nights commons. Not the whole set. I thought, let's just start with the common cards and, uh, and play Dr. Head a few. So that is awesome to see a few uh, here that he sent to me. So why Lily Wolf? One green and one. And uh, it's a one one. It's actually quite handy. You can tap it to give any creature in play plus one plus one until end of turn. I really like to combine this with Pendlehaven, right? So you give your one one first, the plus one plus two bonus from Pendlehaven, and then you give the why Lily Wolf bonus. And that means your 1-1 one, one creature is now a 3-4 creature. Can you imagine then adding a Giant Grove and then adding a Berserk? Now, that, that, that's really a lot of damage. Ooh, a beautiful, beautiful Camel. The condition of these cards is just insane. Look at that. This is like back fresh almost. Wow. Amazing. And we've got a Giant Tortoise. Actually, the camel didn't, didn't discuss what the camel does. It's an all one creature for one white. It's got bands and all creatures attacking in a band with the camel are immune to damage done by deserts, which was a land type in Arabian Nights. Very, very cool, very flavorful. Um, and then we've got a giant tortoise, one blue and one. Actually a card that sees some play in formats like Seven Point Singleton. Uh, this is a one one, right? But giant tortoise gains plus O plus three while untapped. So if you keep this baby untapped, You've got a pretty decent blocker. And then, ooh, the Hazran Ogress. Two black to cast for a 3-2 creature. So three power for two black, that's pretty good. It does have an upkeep cost uh, though, because you have to pay two um, each time Hazran Ogress attacks. 
So it's not an upkeep cost, you just have to pay for it to attack, or the ogre deals three damage to you. I mean, look at her, she is mean. Very, very cool card. I wish there were more ogres uh, in the game of old school. And then we've got PD, uh, one white and two for an instant. All defending creatures gain plus O plus three until end of turn. Can you imagine how good this card would have been if it said all attacking creature creatures get plus three plus O? That would make it so good. PT. And then there are Barbary Apes. Very cool. So Barbary Apes, kind of the grizzly bear from Legends. Really nice. And it hasn't been reprinted. Is it on a reserve list? I don't know. It could be. I can't remember. I need a better memory, but I, I think it is actually, but I'm not quite sure. Anyway, it's one green and one for a 2-2 two, two vanilla. Um, so yeah, absolutely beautiful cards. But now let's have a look at this booster. So like Plague Doctor said, he's kept them in order just the way you would find them when buying um, a box. Oh, look at that. Oh, he's actually sealed them as well. Oh, <laughs> that's so cool. I love that. Um, that little, like, how do you call it, the gold thread that would be here, right? And it would open up the plastic. That was, like, awesome. But, wow, I so appreciate this play, Doctor. This is, I mean, this is a man who loves old school, right? Who loves the nostalgia. Um, when people ask me, so why do you play old school over other formats? For me, it's the only format, you know, first of all. And also, I have a feeling with these cards. I have a nostalgia with these cards. It's an, it's an emotional thing, you know, and I think that's what, what Play Doctor has here as well. Doesn't mean that you cannot play old school if you didn't start in, in, in 90. I'd start in 95, which is quite late, you know, for old school. That doesn't mean that at all, but it's just my personal reason. When I'm playing with these cards, I mean, it really, really takes me back. Wow, you know what, I'm gonna smell them. They're probably not gonna have the smell, but I'm gonna do it anyway. They they kinda have the smell. They kinda have the smell. It's not as, as heavy, but they kinda have the smell. We also have a rule book here with the infamous Shivan Dragon. That was definitely the card that you were always hoping to find in your booster packs. And um, I think I, I never pulled a Shivan, unfortunately. And uh, here we have then first the common cards or not. Okay, we've got, ooh, we already have the uncommons here. I was under the impression that the uncommons and rares would be here, but it could be wrong. El Hajash is definitely not a common. I'm gonna turn it around and let me put these three cards over here. Let's just check out the commons first. So we've got a dark ritual condition of these cards is insane by the way they really look uh, uh, booster fresh so we've got dark ritual and we have a planes I'm going to keep this deck together by the way Plague Doctor because now I want to play with it against you we've got a power leak we have a tranquility we have a paralyze We've got a red elemental blast, very handy. We have an iron root tree folk. We've got, oop, we got two cards. I've got an island and I've got a terror. I just, I just love, love looking at these cards. The terror art is amazing. We've got a forest. We've got a swamp. We've got a jump. Oh, I just love the art of jump. Love it, love it, love it. I always like to put jumps on my um, uh, sea serpents. So hopefully there's a sea serpent in here as well. Then we've got a wild growth. Then we have a scape zombies. Very cool flavor text. Then we've got unholy strength. And this one still has the pentagram. And then we've got a planes, a fire breathing, drudge skeleton, healing solve. So funny that the healing solve is in the boon cycle, like together with, with lightning bolt and ancestral recall. Insane. Uh, Dwarven warriors. 
a swamp. So back in the day, there were a lot of basic lands in these starter decks. And this was basically the best way to get basics, buying a starter deck. So we've got a Frozen Shade, another Plains. Ooh, a Lightning Bolt. That's really good. Pretty decent starter deck so far. I'm kind of missing the bigger creatures. So I would love a Crow Worm, a Swamp here, by the way. A Banalish Hero. Let me turn my sound off from the computer. There we go. We've got a Forest. A Mountain. That's good, like I need the mana to play these things out. An island. I have nothing with double colors, by the way, in their casting cost, so that's quite good. Giant spider, now that's useful. That's a big creature. I mean, four toughness, that's hard to beat. A shatter. Unstable mutation, that's a good card. I have single flyers, by the way, like zero flyers. That's what I'm trying to say. So hopefully I can find like a script sprites. Another planes, by the way, this is a hill giant. Favorite card of my brother who organizes the hill giant tournaments here in Hilversum. There we've got the power sink, the mustard man. Really good uh, counter spell. Kind of weird that it's not uncommon or even rare. We've got circle of protection red. We've got a mountain. A reconstruction. I've got a global set of these. Very, very cool. And we have a forest. A Mons Goblin Raiders. An island. Stream of Life. So this is one of the only two cards that, you know, the rule stacks wouldn't need to be changed if you would uh, reprint it today. So it's pretty sweet about the stream of life. And then we have the fireball classic card. This is quite good. You know, I've got some really good cons in this uh, in this pack. The grizzly bears, really, really nice. Okay, then we're gonna have a look. I think these are the rares, including El Ajash, I think. So I'm gonna keep these here. I'm first gonna check out the uncommons. So we have our rule book and then we have our uncommons. And this is really sweet because clone is actually uh, the first card that I remember pulling out of uh, pulling out of a, a booster pack. And that's the reason why I kind of fell in love with blue, because with clone, you can make everything. Like you've got the asterisks, asterisks at the bottom. So I was like, wow, with this card, I can make a Sheevan if my opponent has a Sheevan. And for me, that was just awesome. So we've got a clone, a wall of stone. We've got a crumble. We've got a The Rack for one, Iron Star. Yeah, so these are definitely the uncommons in the pack. So we've got Wall of Ice. And then it was very common to have lands in your uncommon part. I can even get lands in the rare section, I think. So we've got a Plains, we've got a Mountain, we've got a Forest, we've got a Conversion, Ooh, this is good. Earth Elemental. Now, that is a card that's really good in uh, Restricted. That is useful. Big, big boy. And a Basalt Monolith. So that's not too bad. That's pretty good. And now we're going to go to the rares. So we have our El Hajash. Two black and one to cast for a 1-1. One, one. And uh, this is kind of the first card with lifelink, right? So you gain one life for every point of damage El Hajash inflicts. So that's pretty cool, you know, if you can pump it like with Bat Moons and Unholy Strengths, it's pretty sweet. So that's the first rare. The second rare, 6-6. Six, six. Oh, I know, this is um the, the Avatar, Personal Incarnation. Yep, Personal Incarnation, such a cool card. So this is a 6-6 six, six for 6. You can here see the Mage casting your Personal Incarnation. It is a Summon Avatar, and it reads, Caster can redirect any or all damage done to Personal Incarnation to self instead. The source of the damage is unchanged. If personal incarnation goes to the graveyard, caster loses half of his or her remaining life points, rounding up the loss. So it's pretty brutal, right? If someone plays a terror on this card, you've got a big problem. But 
if somebody plays like a double bolt, you can simply take one point of that damage to yourself instead. So the incarnation survives. Like it cannot die to direct damage. It cannot die to combat damage. And actually when it's get, getting killed by, for example, uh, a swords to plowshares, you also don't lose the life because it's removed, it's exiled. It doesn't go to the graveyard. So this card is actually not that bad. It, it, you just need, need to protect it, I guess. And in a lot of cases, it's really hard to kill for your opponent. So this is personal incarnation. Now we're gonna go to the last rare. It's a blue one. It's a fourth rare. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tom Wanderstrand. Pirate ship. Here we go. The pirate ship. I love I love this pack. Yeah, this is really, really a Timmy pack. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for sending this my way, Plague Doctor. You're just amazing, man. You're so generous sending all this stuff to me. And I love this pack. I love the idea behind it that you're doing this with your friends. Um, I think we need to um, we need to play a game. It's as simple as that. You know, I'm, we got we to gotta play a game. I'm going to record it for the channel for sure. So I, I guess I got to... Shuffle this up and we got to play. Anyway, um, thank you very much for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, another Mill Day episode. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Let me know if you've ever bought a starter deck like this and if you remember a single card in that deck. What was your favorite card in your starter deck? I would love to hear from you for now. Thank you very much for watching and let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do? Zing!